So I love the um, energy. I love the fact that um, you can be anybody you want there and on your own schedule and you can do anything you want there and, um, and, the, and the pace, the frantic pace. I am in uh, Manhattan in particular, so it's very busy. You know, there's a real certain energy there that, um, you know, to some degree, can drive you crazy, um, but it can also just simply drive you. Yeah. So it's it's very difficult to be in two places at once. Um, of course. The time difference is hard, and, and physically not being there is difficult. Um, but we're able to overcome those obstacles by working our video conference. And in fact, we have that set up here in the studio where they can see our studio here in Madrid, and we can see their studio in New York. So that's one way, of course, texting, phone, and emailing, and chatting. Um, you know, those are all the, uh, the ways we can communicate, of course, but it's, it's not easy. Yeah, it's not easy at all. Sure, well, I don't have um, many plans um, besides working because uh, I'm here 10 in the morning until 10 at night, every day, Monday through Friday. And, um, and of course, like we said, I have to um, work on other things and work on the New York studio um, outside of my hours here, so it doesn't... Uh, leave me much time to do much of anything else. I had always assumed and always believed that um, art stands in direct opposition to industry. And um, art is the uh, complete antithesis of, um, of corporations. And so when Warhol uh, declared his studio to be a factory, it was sarcastic and ironic and when you know Warhol said in a very deadpan manner you know I want to be a machine it was also an anti-art sentiment um, and now to see a lot of artists take that seriously you know and take that almost to the extreme my reaction has been to push it even further in an even more sarcastic way and set up a studio franchise and and um, almost push and exploit the concept of, an, of the artist as a brand. Now the artist is a reproducible brand. I, I'm most in, in inspired and moved by anybody doing what they want to do um, without seeking permission, and that includes um, bands, that includes filmmakers, that includes people who start their own businesses, and, and you know, create their own websites, and just because they they want to, you know, not because they um, have gotten permission from somebody, or not because they made a business plan to do so, and um, uh, not for for no other reason other than the the joy and love of doing the thing that they're doing. Yeah. This is one of my favorite. This is a. Um, a drawing of a Raoul Hausman, um, one of my favorite Dada artists, a drawing of uh, one of his sculptures. So it's a mannequin head, uh, different components attached to it. Um, this is a drawing of a, uh, a girlfriend who is in fact a, kind of a devil with a split tongue. Um, these are two people at a face-to-face -face meeting, but texting each other or calling each other or in some way not communicating face to face but through some kind of handheld device instead. This is another little psychedelic vision of these um, smiling kind of clown faces um, that would open up and reveal another uh, dimension behind it. But right now it's closed. This larger image which is also here, is a redrawing from a Misfits album, one of my favorite bands. This is, of course is a, is a snake in which the tongue is the key to unlock its own heart. 
but it's it's broken. Um, this is a spire or, or a spike over which someone has killed himself. So this is a body and a head uh, stuck on the spike. I've always liked uh, Bosch, Hieronymus Bosch, and so I look at a lot of Bosch paintings um, and uh, extract different elements um, from some of you know, his surreal environments. This is the idea of um, being able to exactly articulate what you're thinking in your mind's eye. So you can speak of what you see and what you are thinking of, which is almost impossible to do, but that's what this symbolizes. Of course, it's, it's a head with a speech bubble and also a thought bubble seeing the exact same thing. This is um, a, a, a puppeteer, a sock puppeteer, who is in fact a puppet himself. So, every, you know, even though you think you're controlling the strings or, or controlling someone, you're always actually being controlled. This drawing here is a reference to an installation I did a few years ago, a mirror maze. And so this is uh, a mirror that's kind of infinitely reflecting on itself. You know, there are, there are things from the studio, like ladders. This is a calculator. This is a drill from the studio, uh, reproduced at one to one. This hand is a drawing of um, this uh, famous uh, photograph of Ian Curtis holding a lead singer of uh, Joy Division holding a cigarette. That's what that's from. Uh, let's see, this is an overhead projector, which is one of the uh, tools that we use in the studio. This is another kind of psychedelic vision of the smiley face that folds in on itself. So the smile is forms this kind of infinite loop, this kind of infinite happiness. Some artists prefer to investigate uh, deeply, while some artists choose to investigate broadly. And then there's always a range in between. And I think the, for me personally, the thing to um, be cautious of is recognizing what is driving investigations. Um, there's uh, certainly a demand for a certain kind of painting that I make, but I'm careful not to let that uh, influence what I need to be making. And as a result, I make a lot of work that um, is not market-driven or market-supported. And, um, you know, there are there aren't many consequences to that. It's just that I choose not to, um, in the most blunt terms, make as much money as I could. Um, and that's, uh, you know, and that's a decision. You know, I keep my studio small. You know, we decide when it's appropriate to grow and expand and, and, and how to do that. Uh, but I think as long as I can Hopefully, continue to keep at the at the at the forefront of my mind and concern. It's just simply what I need to personally investigate. Um, so these are the first two in what I hope will be a series of three wigs that I'm making, and I'm growing the third one right now. And these wigs serve as uh, symbols for myself, but symbols that can be used when someone puts them on uh, and assumes my identity, which is, a large, which is really what the ex exhibition is about. Um, assuming uh, my identity and, and, and being me and uh, making my work and reproducing my studio. And so one symbolic gesture for doing that is to um, certainly make the wigs and make them available, but also to wear them. I, um, I finish here in Madrid on March 7th, and then I go to uh, New York for a week, and then I come back to Europe and go to Helsinki for an exhibition I have there um, at Gallery uh, Forsblom. And 
and that opens March 18th. And then we're continuing in the studio with our uh, 50 Parties project, in which we do a party every week in the studio um, with a different theme or a different concept. We're at party number 34 this week, and that will continue through the end of July. And then um, uh, this summer, I'm going to finish with a series of paintings I've been working on for a few years, which are um, black on black paintings, um, of which there's one example here in this exhibition. And uh, I'm just kind of continuing with, the, with my work in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah.